All right, so we've been talking a lot about the dot product. And what we'll often do is we'll have um, a matrix X that has all our data. And then we have some coefficients that we're going to use to multiply row by row on that data to produce a Y value. And, and so if you know how to do the dot product, well, then you can compute what the Y is if you have um, both the X and C are known. Now, a very related problem is that we might want to look at a lot of previous data where we only know x and we only know y, and then we want to infer what c is based on that. All right, so that's a slightly different problem, right? Computing y, given x and c, is a prediction. Computing c, given x, I'm sorry, computing y, given x and c, is a prediction. Computing C given X and Y is what we call inference, right? And, and so what you might typically do when we're machine learning is we might learn from a bunch of examples of X and Y. So we figure out what the C is. And then drawing forward where the Y isn't known, well, we use the C we learned before and new X data to predict the new Y. Okay, and so the, the questions I, I want to talk about today is when is it possible to solve for C in, in this equation? Uh, mathematically speaking, and um, and it turns out that uh, uh, it's often there is no answer, right? And so eventually, where we're headed is well, what do we do when there's no answer? How can we get the the like next best thing to an actual answer? Um, a related question is when does this work? So this is one way to solve that, right? We just ask NumPy to solve. Hey, here's my x and y. Please give me a c. And uh, it, it turns out that. Um, if it's mathematically possible, this isn't guaranteed to work, right? NumPy is a little bit more limited. Even um, in cases where there's a mathematically correct answer, sometimes NumPy doesn't figure it out. Uh, so those are the two things I want to talk about today. Um, let's review a little bit from our fruit example, and I want to start thinking about um, kind of related problems and related forms of the problem um, as I talk about it. Uh, what we were looking at before were these fruit baskets. You could imagine you're selling fruit baskets and each basket might have varying numbers of apples or bananas. And uh, as you sell them, let's say that there's an auction or something and you get some sort of market price. And uh, what you're trying to figure out based on this is even though I've never sold a single apple by itself, can I look at all these different baskets I've sold with different amounts of fruits and infer what each fruit is worth. How much is one apple worth? How much is one banana worth? Can I figure that out uh, given this data? And, and so one way we can do it is we can take this data, right? These rows, maybe uh, this came from a data frame and uh, we can convert it to equations, right? We, we know that 10 times the apple plot price plus the value of the basket equals seven, right? Because, well, we sold exactly that for $7. Uh, based on the second case, we, we can infer down here that two times the apple price plus eight times the banana price plus the basket price um, equals five. Right, So there's an equivalence between data and equations. Right, Every time we make a new observation in the world, uh, we get a new equation to work with. Now, the other thing we could do is we can put all these coefficients. Right, You can see like I have um, you know, 10 here is showing up in each case. You know, zero here is showing up, I guess, in each case. Right, There's no bananas. Um, there's one basket, so I guess the basket up here, there's kind of an implicit one. Um, if I wanted to, I could take all the values in these um, uh, equations or in the data, and I could put it uh, in a matrix, which I've done down here, right? So so kind of, uh, in the first case, I sold a basket that had 10 apples, zero bananas, and one basket. And I had two apples, eight bananas, and one basket, so on and so forth. And then the values of these were seven, uh, five, five. And, and so that's great. I can run... Uh, numpy linear algebra dot solve on my x and y and it tells me this these are my values of my fruits right i have i have this c here and uh and, and of course that's cool because then if i ever had um if i had like a new fruit basket right i could predict how much that would be worth right let's say i have like um uh let's say i have like no apples and, and then three bananas and then one fruit basket um if i multiply that by if I multiply that by my coefficients, I'm like, well, that basket is worth 275. And uh, and if I have a repeat of a basket I've seen before, right? Let's say I have two apples, um, eight bananas, and, and one basket. Th then hopefully it gives me the same thing I learned before, right? Because I actually learned some rules, and it does. Okay, well that one's worth five dollars. 
And, and so what I want to think about is when does this uh, linear algebra dot solve work or not work? And I'm just going to kind of copy all that down here and, and kind of think about this problem, right? So this was all good, right? So this is all good up here. And then up here, I want to think about, you know, how, how can it go wrong, right? And so, so one way it can go wrong is, um, let's say I add another row here. Uh, and, and let's say for this row, I have, um, uh, I, I don't know, I may say I have one apple and, uh, and, and zero bananas and, and one basket. So I added this additional row. And, um, and, uh, and, and let's say that, well, what is that actually worth? I think I already figured out before that apples are worth 50 cents and the basket is worth two. So that, that basket ought to be worth 250. And so I do that. And I see that, well, uh, NumPy is unhappy. It's saying that that array must be square, right? And, and so this rule of it being square is maybe the rule that you've heard before, right? If you're trying to solve a bunch of equations, uh, you'd better have the same number of equations and variables. And, and this is a little bit unfortunate, right? That uh, NumPy is so quickly refusing to solve this problem because I know that there actually is a solution, right? I, I had this solution before this C, and um, and I can actually do this, right? If I if I um, if I just kind of hard code, if I say C, well here, first of all, let me make a note here. It won't work because it's not square. So so NumPy can't do it, but it turns out there is a mathematical solution. It's the same solution as, as before, right? So if I put this here, um, let me see if I can actually solve that. I may say. Uh, I'm going to say x times y, or times the coefficients, and y is that unhappy because I have to say numpy dot array. You know, this is absolutely the same y that we had before is a good solution, right? When I multiply all my data by those coefficients, I get 7, 5, 5, 2.5, which is exactly what we have in the data, right? So there is a solution even though NumPy can't find it. Now, there are going to be other cases where um, not only is there not a NumPy uh, solution, but uh, there's not a mathematical solution. And, um, and, and one case for that that you might imagine is, um, let me copy this, right? So I was trying to have an example of how it goes wrong with NumPy. How can it go wrong mathematically speaking? And... Um, and so let me try and just put this back to what we had before, right? And, and I'm just going to kind of delete all this. Um, one of the things that could go wrong is, well, maybe there's some noise in the system, right? So, so for example, let, let's say I copy this right here. And, and so really I'm selling the same fruit basket twice and, uh, and there's some noise in the world. So let's say like the first time was $5 and the next time it's like, you know, $4.9, right? that's not going to work, right? Because I have two uh, equations that are kind of contradictory here, right? T kind of what this means is that if I just wanted to read off of these two, I I'm really saying like four times, four times apple plus four times banana plus one times basket um, equals five. And then I'm also having this other equation which is saying it's equal to 4.9. And of course that can't be true, right? Because five and 4.9 are different numbers, right? So if I have this kind of situation, well, too bad, I can't solve it, right? So one of the things I want you to start thinking about is these equivalent statements, right? Because I said there are these three forms of the data, right? I could have the data itself, I could have equations, or I could take the, the kind of numbers out of these equations and put in a matrix. And so down here, the three things I'll say is that uh, there's a there's a, a solution to the system of equations that's equivalent to saying that there's a mathematical solution for x y equals or x c equals y I can solve for c and um, and it's also equivalent to saying that y is in the column space of, of x right if you kind of look back at what I'm doing I'm multiplying x by the c and hopefully getting this this y right so. When I multiply x by c using the dot product, I'm taking a linear combination of the columns of x, right? I'm 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 calculating something in the uh, in, in the column space of x, and and so if I can't do that and end up with y, 
that means there's no solution into the problem, right? So if y is not in the column space of x, then I'm out of luck, right? I can't solve this problem mathematically speaking. Okay, so when does this show up? Um, it generally is going to show up when I have uh, more rows than columns in my data set, right? Because that means I have more equations and variables, and those equations are probably going to contradict each other. I mean, there's other problems, but I think this is a problem where I see most often, right? This usually means that the equations aren't solvable mathematically speaking because y isn't in the column space of x. Um, and then in the rare cases where somehow there is a solution, right? Maybe I copied the same equation twice. Uh, NumPy is trying to complain about it. And, and so what do we do when we uh, kind of come to this, right? I, I'd still like to, you know, even in this scenario, right, where I sold the same basket twice, you know, these numbers are still kind of similar. It'd be nice if I could still say something about how much apples and bananas are, are worth. And, and so when we do this, when we hit an unsolvable problem, the good approach uh, in life is to solve a, a related problem. Um, not our original problem, but try to change it into a slightly easier problem that we can solve. And, uh, and, uh, and if we do that, well, maybe when we solve that other one, the answer might still tell us something meaningful about what we were hoping to solve. And, and so let me go back to this where, um, uh, where NumPy was unhappy before, or I guess even in this last case, um let, let me let me grab this one right so this is where it was unhappy and um and what we could not do is we could not say c equals numpy dot linear algebra dot solve uh x and y that that was a no-go so it can't solve because x is not square this is not solvable um it, it turns out that a very similar problem is solvable um, the vast majority of the time, and uh, and it's just slightly different, right? I mean, I'm not really ever going to solve that original one, but I'm going to solve something that's still going to tell me something meaningful. And, and what that is is that I may have to multiply both my x and my y by something. And I'm not trying to get into the mathematical reasons why, but it turns out that I can multiply both by the transpose, right? So I can say x dot transpose that and x dot transpose that, and, and it turns out that is a solvable problem. And if I look at c. I, I get this. And, and, and to just kind of give you a, an intuition that this is meaningful, I'll eventually talk more about why this is like the best answer we could have. But let's look at how close it was uh, to what we had before we kind of added this bogus row. Before uh, we got our coefficients, it was 0 0.5, 0 0.25, and 2. Here I have 0 0.525, 0 0.275, and 1.75. So this is similar similar to our answer before we added the problem, the, the troublesome row. Right, so, so in some sense it's, it's kind of meaningful, right? Well, why, why does it work? Um, we've said before that we want to have the same number of, um, of, of rows and columns, and, uh, and I haven't even really talked about what this means when I multiply here, what am I doing? I guess uh, both um, x dot transpose, x dot trans, oh, <laughs> x dot transpose is a matrix, and x is a matrix, and I haven't even talked about what this means yet when I multiply a matrix by a matrix, but it, but it turns out when I do this kind of thing, I multiply the transpose of, of a matrix by a matrix, I'm guaranteed to get something square, which is what we what we need, right? So so that's why this problem here generally ends up being solvable. And uh, and I'm not trying to talk more in this lecture about why that's the best answer. We'll eventually talk about that a little bit more.